up in motorcades. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, everyone out there? Today is a beautiful day out here in Austin, Texas. I'm here at Hit Athletics, one of the top gyms, man. And <laughs> we got some good things coming, man. We got some good things coming. I finally get to tell you my story, the truth. March 5th of 2023 changed my life forever. A flip of a switch. But I'm here to tell you my story. Let's go. Ran into a longtime friend, Ron, man. He saw this. First thing he said was, oh, what happened? I was like, man, relax. I'm okay. I'm at peace with it. But God puts people in places for a reason. So he let me know about a foundation that he has grown throughout these years yeah. that help kids and adults with prosthetics and get to back to life. Tell me about it a little bit. Yeah, it's called the Challenge Athlete Foundation. It's in California. Okay. So basically uh, they raise money every year. Mm -hmm. And so anyone can apply for a grant to get uh, either a prosthetic leg, a wheelchair, a snow, um, skiing thing. I mean, any, anything you need for to make you an athlete. Wow. Again, they want to get you back out in the field. That's amazing, yeah. brother. Well, we so, definitely got to connect because yeah, like you know I'm getting back into yeah. the film, baby. I don't know you like to baby, work out. I know, brother. Well, I appreciate running yeah. into you. We're definitely going to link up, and yeah. I can't wait to run with the kids with the prosthetics and, you know, really compete with them. It's a whole new chapter, a whole new world, baby. Yo, what's up, man? I'm here at Hit Athletics, man. The myth, the legend, the guy that's been by my side supporting me, man, never gave up on me, is my man Eddie right here, Director of Operations. Right now, we're here at Hit Athletics. We're about to film behind the scenes. CBS is telling my story, my story, people. But he's letting me use his gym to shoot that and to let y'all know everything that's going on. Eddie, introduce yourself, man. Just yeah, say. man. Uh, Eddie Aspar is the director of operations here at Hit Athletic. I've had a relationship with this guy for uh, a few years now. So we've trained together, we've kind of hung out together, but decided to kind of see, you know, where his story takes him. But man, just supporting this guy, uh, just as, this is the least we can do for him. And thank God for people like this, man, here to support me since day one. Thank you, brother. Right, Let's yeah. do it. Thank you, brother. So, can I introduce y'all real quick to my uh, YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yo, got to introduce you to this guy. This is why this is all happening right now. Yes, we are Hit Athletics. This is where it's going down. He is about to bring my story to life. Who is he? His name is Walter, CBS News. Tell him about yourself. Look, this is about him, okay? He looks like a GQ model. He's a beast <laughs> in the gym yes, and he's a professional athlete, but you know what? His story is more powerful and I am just honored to be able to tell it. And it doesn't end here. I think this is only the beginning and I'm so proud of where you've been and where you're going. And it's just going to be amazing. Man, um, I'm, oh man, I'm kind of lost for words. Um, I finally get to tell my story, man. Um, I've been through a lot this last year. 2023 was one of my hardest years, but I didn't let it break me. I'm here, I'm standing tall. For everyone that threw stones at me while I was down, it's not how you fall, it's how you get back up. Now here's a true story. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready to open that door just yet. I don't know. It's been a lot, it's been a lot this last year. Good days and bad days, and that's real, and that's really just, people try to hide the bad days, and you don't. You say, look, I'm complex, it's a complex thing, not easy, this is me. And that's what I love about your story. I'm ready. Okay, take me back to the challenge. You're on top of the world. What was it like? What was the challenge like? Man, that's hard to wrap up, but if I had to wrap it up, it was a dream come true. I never thought I would be on the challenge. I never thought that I had the opportunity to travel to nine different countries, from South Africa to Thailand to London. I thought it was a dating show. And to keep this short and simple, I did a dating show with Jerry Springer. He did uh, Baggage on the Road on Game Network, and that's how MTV saw me, because I ended up winning that. And that's when my reality TV just kicked off career. And I walked onto this challenge, and I'm thinking, okay, this is a party. But then I go into my first elimination. Oh my God, the lights were on me. It was like Friday Night Lights. Everyone screaming at you. You got the crowd up there, you got your teammate beside you. I ended up winning that elimination. And that's when my challenge career took off. And I've got nine seasons. What was it like in that world? You were on the top, top physical form, great looking guy, all this publicity. 
people were literally coming up to me crying, saying, we love you. And I'm like, wow. But they don't tell you about all the background. They don't tell you how people have their eyes on you 24-7. You can't even make a mistake. You can't even jaywalk without getting in trouble. Like, you have to change your whole personality of who you are to fit these people's standards because they put you on this pedestal. But they don't realize, man, this was all new to me. So it hit me hard. Sky's nice the limit. This is big, baby. I thought it was Superman. I thought I was untouchable. I thought I was a man. It was crazy, man. Doors started opening up. People would talk to me that I didn't even know. And um, I felt like I was on top of the world. I haven't hit the peak of a mountain yet. I grew up with nothing. So I didn't need, I need the bare minimum to make it. Did I want nice things? Yes. But did I need it? No. I was living my life and um, I'm still living it. How important is being in the gym and working out for you? Being in a gym is really important. You know, clanging and banging weights is me. But it ain't about that. It's about the growth. It's about the mentality. It's about your spirit. You think about all these things while you're working out. You, either you had a bad day or your day's not going good. So I go into that gym and I take my anger out on that. And I'm not just growing these muscles, baby, but I'm growing this up here. I'm thinking, I'm realizing, you know, I'm finding some kind of clarity in things. And that's how the gym helps me prepare for life. Joe, you're on top of your game. Life is just incredible for you and your family and your friends. You are the envy of a lot of people. I'm like, wow, man, Nelson has it made. What happened that night? That memory is so vivid in my head. Um, it's the worst night of my life. 20 hours before that, I was hosting a fitness event downtown Austin, Texas. Hosting a fitness event, motivating people to get into the gym, eat better, everything. Next thing you know, 24 hours later, typical Sunday. Out with friends having a couple of drinks, nothing unusual. Well, that night, I had too many drinks. My life changed forever. I hit a pillar. What do you remember? What I remember is getting into that car, telling my friends bye, and driving. And next thing you know, I wake up, and the car's on fire. And I thought I was in hell. I thought it was enough. Um, uh, I literally opened my eyes and all I could see was flames. And I'm like, I'm dead. But then I heard voices, people screaming. And um, telling me, get out the car, get out the car, get out the car. And I'm thinking in my head, what's, what's going on? I'm like, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm here. But I couldn't move at first. I would, the door on the driver's side was pinned, so I couldn't go out the driver's side. I had to get out of the passenger side, but I couldn't get out the driver's seat. And then the young lady, Rita, this brave woman, comes up to the car and pulls it. And I push the door open. Rita, Abdul, KJ Osborne, But I don't want to forget anybody that helped me that night. The first thing I thought about in my mind and prayed about, I prayed that um, I hadn't hurt anybody else. That accident only involved me and me only. And when my mom said that, my family said that nobody else was involved, so thankful. I was so happy. And um, I, mean, I, mean, I was hurt. And I was going through a lot of pain that day. And it's excruciating. But it, it just, if I would have hurt somebody that night, I don't know how to live with myself. And this is my story, and I'm going to own it because I got a second chance. What would you say to people 
about drinking and driving. Now they do a lot You know, we all drink, we all have a good time, we all had a beer or two, we all say, oh, we're good, we're okay, I can take a shot. I've done this plenty of times, but it only takes one drink for your life to turn around. And that's all it took. And I'm living proof that all the world's happening. You know, you might, you might have a good time, you might feel on top of the world, you might even feel like Superman. But at the end of the day, it ain't no good for you. And I'm not telling you to stop drinking, I'm not telling you to do that, just be responsible. Be responsible. But I'm going to be an advocate for drinking and driving. Because when I was going to that in the hospital, you know, my legal team said, you know, so you can't say anything. You just said, I know you want to. I know you want to come out. This is who you are. You've always been yourself. You never hide from nothing. You always just go straight through the storm. But people don't realize what social media could do to a person, especially a person that's in the light like me. I couldn't even go nowhere without people telling me, DWI, drinking and driving, this and that. DMs blowing up. Go kill yourself. You don't deserve to be alive. People said, go kill yourself? What? People said, go hang me. Go hang yourself. Go hang yourself. I hope you overdose some pills. I hope you die in the hospital. I hope you don't recover from that accident. I fell into depression. I fell into anxiety. And most of all, I hate to admit this, but um, it's easy to get pills. It's easy to get hydrocodeine. It's easy to get any kind of drug. No, what am I gonna do? I'm walking into the unknown. I don't have no PR, I don't have no lawyer, I don't have somebody telling me what to do. I'm just being me and just trying to take everything on as it comes. And that is a lot. I can't even walk right now. And I don't even know if I'd be able to walk again. But I'm trying to take care of everything else on my phone and not even paying attention about healing process. And then, um, who was it? I would have been addicted to pills. I would have been addicted to drugs. Dances are, no matter who you are, where you come from, what your background, or your ethnicity, you can do it. You just have to believe. And uh, I'm living proof. You know, um, one of my favorite verses in here, John 13. I may not know now, but later I will understand. I'm on a path, but I'm not just doing it for me anymore. I'm not saying, why me, why me, why is this happening to me? I'm asking God, what is the next step? What do you want me to do? You know, I'm doing everything the doctor tells me to do. I'm doing everything where I'm eating good, taking vitamins. I'm going to all my appointments, I'm working out. I'm not pushing myself too much. I'm doing exactly what he wants. Written by the book, rule by rule. And one day my ankle starts hurting. And I go to the doctor, I say, yo, my ankle's hurting a lot more than usual. And they do CT scans. And they say, oh, it's nothing, it's okay, it's all right. You don't have to worry about nothing, you're just in pain. So then another two weeks come. And I say, no, something doesn't feel right, man. Something really doesn't feel right. Can we take another look at it? And they tell me, I have a non-union bone. It doesn't want to heal. I have arthritis going throughout my foot. The reason why I don't have any pain down there because all my nerves are jacked up. The blood flow, it's not getting any blood flow. They hooked, I, that sick surgery, when they took skin from my left thigh, right here, this line, to put right here, to cover this hole so they can hook it up to an artery in my hip so it can get blood flow, which is a surgical flap. And I'm thinking that's the last surgery and everything's good. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. My injury was so severe, it was a 10 out of the 10. And uh, the doctor said, we've seen things like this, Nelson. We've came a long way, but your ankle does not want to heal. So I was like, okay. I went on social media, I cried. I didn't ask for sympathy. I wasn't looking for any sympathy or anything like, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. I was just letting you know, I was letting people know how I felt inside and what I was going through. And then, um, I had a couple of angels 
slide into my DMs. Say, Nelson, if you get to Mexico, we'll give you a stem cell treatment. And that can probably help. So I called my mom, I said, mom, pack your bags, we're going to Mexico. We went to Mexico, we did the stem cells, we waited about three months. Did it help with the pain? Did it help with the arthritis? Yes. But did it heal my bone? Unfortunately not. I talked to doctors from LA, New York, about six different, six different doctors from Houston to Austin and everyone has said the same thing. Nelson, you got a couple choices. You can either get an ankle fusion, TTC fusion, or a word that I wouldn't let nobody say. Not one person. I wouldn't even let you think about it. Amputation. And then um, it really hit me. It really hit me. Um, spoke to my brother, spoke to my close friends, my family. I did my due diligence on amputation, on ankle fusion, on TTC fusion. Then I had to ask myself, what kind of quality of life do I want to live? You know, you know Nelson. I love the challenge. I love the compete. I love to push myself to the next level from mountain biking, from snowboarding, from rollerblading, from kayaking to swimming. That's what I love to do. I love motivating and do all those things that people say I can't do. Let's put it to the test, baby. But unfortunately, I couldn't do that with an ankle fusion because that would have left me with no dorsal flex. And what that is, is mobility in your ankle. My ankle would have been stiff. Right now, your ankle could do this. It can do this, it can do this, it can take impact, it can take pressure, and you can run with it. But I wouldn't be able to run. I wouldn't be able to walk barely, and I'll be in pain throughout. I don't know how long the doctor said. Life is crazy, man. My swim coach reached out to me and said, hey, I have a friend that wants to talk to you about the prosthetic world, just in case you were thinking about that. Next thing you know, I get on the phone with my friend Mark, and um, he tells me, look, man, I want to introduce you to another guy that has a nonprofit group called Wiggle Your Toes. And I got on the phone with him. The conversation was crazy. We were supposed to be on the phone for five minutes. We ended up being on that phone for 45 minutes. And next thing you know, he gives me a tour. He sets me up with an interview at Autobahn, which is one of the number one prosthetic slash self-care place. So I take that tour. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, man. The day comes where I'm taking the tour. And I'm wondering, how am I going to get there? Like, I, I can't drive. I'm calling friends. One of my friends is running late. I'm like, all right, let me put this address in. Let me see how far this is. Tell me why this was three blocks away from my apartment. I'm like, God, if this is not a sign what it is, I can literally walk there. And I'm like shocked. I'm like, all right, cool. All right. God, that's one sign. Next thing you know, never amputee reached out to me, another amputee reached out to me, and then a couple of paramedics reached out to me. And I'm like, whoa. Then I really started doing my research. Then I started opening that door to the amputation world. God, that's a whole new world that a lot of people don't know about. And we've came so far from not being able to walk, run, jump, compete, and do a lot more of the things of normal, getting back to life. Like the prosthetic world is, it's the future. It is, man, and they're doing amazing things. And I'm having all these people reach out to me saying, we want to help you. They put their helping hand, not knowing me, not judging me, not throwing stones at me, not knowing what. I prayed about it, I talked to my mom, and I decided to have the amputation on March 5th, 2024. I'm gonna own March 5th. I'm not gonna leave that memory in my head to die. I'm gonna go in there, my head held up high, you know. I really take, take that day. What are they gonna do? On March 5th, 2024, they're gonna cut off my right foot. From the top of the ankle? They're gonna cut it off right here. I'll be up below me and PT. And uh, it seems scary to say that, man. Because I remember walking into that office and talking to the doctor and then explaining it to me. And I'm like, okay, okay. But when I walk, I want it anymore. This is what he wants, and I know that's what he wants. I know it. I can feel it in here. I, like, it's not even a second guess anymore to me. But don't get me wrong. 
I had the opportunity to keep my foot and be able to run and jump and do all the things I could, if that was a possibility, yes, I would. To everyone out there that's following my journey, I don't know what the future holds. I wish I did. I wish I could understand it. But I know if I keep him in my heart and I stay true to myself and who I am, I'm going to accomplish great things. And I'm going to help a lot of people out there. I'm going to inspire a lot. I'm prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's gon' go get it. No kidding. Breaking down a switch in front of your villain. Sitting on the steps, feeling no feelings. Last night it was a cold killer. You gotta keep the devil in his hole. But you know how it goes. I'm front line every time it's on.